Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Another video. We came to Slab City, the city with no laws. And we figured what better place to share Jesus and bring hope to a place where people move to because they feel like rejects and hopeless. That's literally what I looked up. So that people move out here because they feel like rejects and hopeless. And plus they got like Salvation Mountain out here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before on the internet, but we just came out here and share Jesus with some people, hear their stories, share what Jesus has done in my life, give some people some hope. So we're going to see what it looks like. Not gonna lie, I watched a lot of TikTok videos and it looked kind of crazy. So we're just gonna have a good time. It's gonna be awesome. All right, we just came over to the Slab City Skate Park right now. We're just kind of kicking it. These guys are awesome, super kind. We're just gonna check out the park, talk to them, hear some life stories, um, share my story. It's gonna be really fun. I'm excited to be here. Our new friend Carlos, Carlos has just been t talking to us a little bit. You said you've been coming out here for like 10 years, yeah. right? Yeah, so you said on and off. So where do you go back and forth from? Uh, Bay Area. Yeah, Bay Area. So here's a good analogy for the truth about Slab City. Uh -huh. You ever hear everybody, everybody talking about Burning Man is just a bunch of techies and it sucks? Well, you go there, there's a bunch of really cool people. And then you hear about Slab City, oh, it's just a bunch of tweakers. You go there, and yeah, there's a bunch of tweakers, just like there's a bunch of techies at Burning Man, but there's also a load of cool people doing cool yeah, being out in Slab City, I know like Salvation Mountains right over there and stuff like that. But like, do you guys believe in anything? What does that look like? Do you guys have hope in something? Uh, I have, I have amazing hope in this place. It looks like a chaotic mess, but we got our trash sorted. We got people helping out. People kitchen in on food. Everyone cooks. We got people coming. People balling out with their EBT. People balling out with their government checks after this lifetime's over like where do you think you go when you die or like what do you think happens when you die i don't know i don't really think about that you don't really think about it no. you don't really believe in anything you just kind of like live life and stuff like that i guess yeah yeah what just, do you believe in i believe in jesus I see you, yeah i see your tattoo oh thank you bro you like it yeah i started believing in jesus like three years ago i had like a supernatural encounter inside of a breakfast restaurant in georgia and i was just like super hopeless i actually had like a lot of depression anxiety and stuff like that didn't really like god so when i had this encounter i was just like god if you're real take this away from me because i you know that stuff sucks it's not fun and so ever since that day i haven't had depression or anxiety it's been crazy dude and so like i actually got to put my faith in jesus and it was so sick what do you think about jesus yeah, i was raised catholic it didn't appeal to me it didn't appeal to you it was very uh i don't know what's the word for it um it did, just did not speak to me at all yeah. I was, I was a bunch of old ladies praying about stuff I don't follow. Yeah. Yeah. Never and what saw the appeal. Outside of like what you know about Catholicism and stuff like that, not even just Catholicism, like what do you think about just Jesus? Jesus? I don't really think much about Jesus. Do you know his story or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. I hear all the good, like I, fuck, I, I remember I went to a Catholic high school and they were taught preaching about oh, all the good things Jesus and all the good messages and they didn't push religion on us. Yeah. And then a lot of people spoke to me and they're like, well, that's just man's word telling us all be kind. Man, those are man's words. And yeah. yeah, that's what spoke to me. Like, I don't need religion for it to, to do good things and be a good person and all that. Sometimes it seems like a bunch of rules and stuff like yeah, that sometimes. Yeah, that's what capitalism felt like. Yeah, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, love, you. I love your energy. Thank you, man. It's just Jesus in me. I used to be, no joke, the most like sad, angry, saddest angry person ever. And then just when I got so Jesus, it changed my Jesus? life. I was inside of Waffle House. It was December 25th. I told you I had bad depression, anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would contemplate my life because I felt like the only way to get rid of it was to take my life. It felt like an incurable disease. So then I was going to take my life. I go to this Waffle House, no joke, to have my last meal. I'm sitting there and I get this encounter with Jesus. Holy Spirit speaking to me, telling me things I've never heard in my life speaking life over me, loving me. And I realized, because I was on a quest for love. I feel like everyone's on a quest for love. That's what they're on. Yeah. And I realized that true love wasn't maybe how I felt towards a girl or maybe like what I loved in this room. Cause like, no matter who I love or what I do, like those things could let me down and they probably will. But I realized Jesus laying his life down for me, dying for me was true love. That's why I have this, this is the Hebrew word for God's love. It means to lay your life down for someone. How's it going? Um, all right, we're going to go this way. Let's do it. So that's called Mermaid Lounge. And then up in front of us, we're going to skip this for a second and okay. go to the taxidermy dinner party. I'm actually so intrigued right now. Yeah, well, get on up in there. We're getting in here. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Where do you get this stuff? Things just make their way to you in the desert. They just show <laughs> up. <Yep. laughs> that's that's awesome. all these rats. Oh, <laughs> People used to show up all the time, be like, that was 
my RV. I'm like, not anymore. We do have a free plus thrift store on the other side of this. If no you want to check it out. Yeah, so it's oh really yeah, we do. Neat. This is a 1957 transit bus that Whoa. was a engineering disaster. So they got to number 37 and said that it couldn't go on the road. So they had to re-engineer the entire thing. There's five of them left. I have this one. It used to be a ministry that roved out around here and Whoa. saved people and preached to us. Whoa. And then yep. you got it from them. I bought it from the widow of the, the pastor. Whoa. So like the art is like something you're really passionate about. Yes. I'm here to do weird art stuff. Let's go. Five years ago, like I said, I bought this trailer from Two Horse Jack. None of the rest of this existed. It's all people's sob stories, needing to get out of town, need some cash, whatever. I'll buy your trailer. This is where it all started though. Whoa. Trailer was here. It was like a guest house. Yeah. Right. And I immediately made it into my first museum. We call it the Skeletorarium. It's okay. full of all the bones and creepy weird crap that I have collected okay. from out here. So okay. look in the fridge. There's a glass cabinet like on the counter. Uh -huh. You gotta kinda pick it up to look inside. Cool. Yep. Okay. We can go in? Yes. Thank you. Oh, There's still thing right there. It's so it's interesting. A lot of it is to quit what is that? Are those chili peppers? Are those, are those chili peppers? What are the odds you eat that? <laughs> One in five. One, two, three, three. Two. Oh, dang. You have to do it. You have to it adds up to two, five. Dude. She said, uh, wait, is this the fridge? Yeah. She said open the fridge, bro. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, I'm gonna shut this now. <laughs> Wait, there's mints. Should I open this? Yeah. What do you think of Salvation Mountain? Because you're into art. Love Salvation. Mountain. Love Salma Salvation Winter Mountain. Night was the first one to come out here and build a full-blown tourist attraction to do one thing: bring people to the desert with a message of love. Yeah. That's it. That's his only goal. Because it's about Jesus. It that is. whole thing's about Jesus. It's all about God is love and Jesus and forgiveness and respect. and Yeah. Yep. What do you think about Jesus? Because you, you see that. You live here. What do you think about him? Righteous mother I always I ask people this stuff. Like, where do you think you go when we die? Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. Living here, I have, I've ended up on a lot of very spiritual journeys at, yeah. at times where things get real real and you end up in a moment almost like like that god moment yeah, right where yeah. you feel like you're there is something else yeah and you almost feel it guiding yeah. you you know so that there's there's a definite element of that yeah but yeah i don't know as a, as a human being i feel like we're not really supposed to know where we're supposed to go yeah All Right. So I try not to think too hard. About yeah. <laughs> Does it like kind of scare you a little bit? A little bit. I mean, yeah. like thinking of complete darkness, that's really scary. Yeah. Thinking that you're going someplace with a whole bunch of like bodiless spirits and energy. And what is it just going to feel like? Yeah. Just, like love? Like, is it what love is? It is that thing that we're all like trying to find and we yeah. can't. And then once we're on the other side, you're just overwhelmed with it. Yeah. Or is it something more tragic and sad? I, I started believing in Jesus three years ago. Okay. I actually went to a private Christian school. My parents sent me there. I didn't like God and had these bad experiences. And I was hurt. I struggled with a lot of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as I was going through this journey of life, I was trying to find what would satisfy me. And I love how you said, stuff doesn't do it. Because a lot of people like hunt to the material stuff and it keeps mm -hmm. letting them down. It and does. I, yep. I did that a lot. Maybe not just mm -hmm. materials, but other things. Everything. Yeah. You lose the focus. You do. It's yep. you, you just think. It has that yep. appeal. And then... So three years ago, I've never drank, I've never smoked, never done anything. While I'm having my last meal, I have this encounter with Jesus. Ooh. I didn't know what love was. I feel like everyone's on a quest for love. Right. And Jesus showed me that love wasn't material things or sex or what all these things. He showed me that love was laying his life down for someone. And I have the Hebrew word for God's love on my hand because I like to greet people with God's love. and. Nice things like that. I used to have that fear of death. I used to have all these fears and this anxieties and depression and I had so many things let me down. I just said, God, if you're real, take away my anxiety and depression. Okay. Since that day, no more. Nice. It's been three years. That is Seriously. so profound. I like, love it. Like so crazy. Yeah. And so because of that light, because of that day, I started yeah. believing in Jesus and I said, I'm going to tell everyone about him. I had like that hole in my heart and mm -hmm. I was trying to use things in the world to fill it, but then it would like, it would be like for the moment it would work. Uh -huh. And then after the moment, I still had that hole, uh -huh. but I kept going back to those things because I didn't know what to do. Uh -huh. And so when I met Jesus, it, the Bible says that 
God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus, uh -huh. living a perfect life, being fully God and fully man. He died on the cross of death that we deserve. You know, wrongdoing separates us. I was so full of myself, That's I just so needed Him. And I was actually just reading on the way over here, at the beginning of John, it says like, there, where there is light, there's no darkness. See? There's absence of See? it. And so not only am I like, that fear of death that you have, mm -hmm. Like if we believe in Jesus, we have eternal life exactly. with this lifetime. But not only that, I believe that Jesus died and resurrected so that heaven could come and live inside of us now. First John says, if anyone does not love, it's because they don't know God because God is love. Mm -hmm. And it was so powerful because I'm a man, my whole life changed when I knew love mm -hmm. and I'm able to love. You know how draining it is to like work to love people and work to be happy versus just letting it be an overflow, I, right? Yes. right? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so Cool. I don't think it's coincidence that we came out here and we got to meet. And I know. Kind, I think kind. this is wonderful. I can't wait to see your project. Wait, is there anything you need prayer for? Just more patience. More patience. Yeah. So cool. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. I think he'll give you that. Can I take your hands and pray for you? Jesus, thank you for Doc. God, we just thank you for uniting us together and bringing us to her. Jesus, we just thank you for her life. God, we thank you that your love. We just ask for more patience in her life in Jesus' name. God, we ask for you to continue to reveal yourself to her, send people to her to show her the love of Jesus more. God, reveal yourself to her in dreams. And we just thank you for Dot's life. We just ask for more creativity in Jesus' name. We just thank you for her artistic ability. And God, we just love her and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, I think that as you're on this journey with your friend and, and just seeking Jesus, mm -hmm. and we're going to keep praying that God reveals himself to you. Okay. I believe that uh, in Romans 1 in the Bible, it says that um, in all nature, his righteousness can be displayed, which means we can look at creation because there's got to be something greater. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Jesus wants to use your artwork Excellent. to point people to him because he's creative and he's made you creative. And I believe that was what he wants to do. I hope so. I think it's so cool. So I think as you're searching in the search for Jesus, I think it's going to be super awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Dot, thanks. Can I give you a hug? Yes. Is that okay? I expect to see you guys again. Uh, you're not very far away. Absolutely. Uh -huh.